boxes at the end, like the kind of like the the short answer ones. Yeah, we can go um, like as the flows go. Um, yeah. Yeah. But like, um, no worries. Yeah. So this is uh, going to be more casual. Um, so I'll, I'll share my screen, even though I, I don't have like a slideshow, although I am taking notes. That's fine. Um, no, that's, that's great. So let me see here. Uh, let me check um, out. Yeah, I want to check that. Did that work? Perfect. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, S, I guess, so this chapter covers two big types of classes, S3 and S4 classes. Um, and I think there are more. I think there's like S6 and S7. Uh, all, all six and R, R7. R6. Okay, 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 mm. R6 and R7. Um, Which are not S implementation uh, okay. by their name. <laughs> okay, um, interesting. So yeah, so we're just covering these... Uh, these first two, I guess, in this chapter. Um, and so like big picture, S3 is like a very simple, flexible, but um, I think like kind of easy to break in some ways, like maybe not as robust class system. Um, whereas S4 is uh, like more formal. Um, you have to kind of uh, pre-specify pre a lot of uh, attributes so it's a little harder to break but it's maybe not as flexible and just a little harder to to grasp um so i guess uh the reason we want classes is because we want to be able to call functions on objects that have special properties and to be able to have the uh the functions react i guess to those properties so like um like running example in the chapter is print and like if we print say we have like X is a numeric uh, vector, you know, we might want to print, you know, we want print to look like that for X, but if X was a data frame, um, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Uh, then it work. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, we might want the print output to look well, my I didn't name the columns, but you know we want the print output to be tabular instead. Um, and so behind the scenes, what's happening is that uh, when the print function is getting past uh, that uh, argument, it's calling either print, I think numeric version, which is a a, a method, I guess for um, well. Yeah, you can't get them like that suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them you like. Like print default, I think you can't get because it's oh no, you can't. Okay. Well you can you uh, can get them like that, but you can't have them like with the um, uh parenthesis. You will need like to use like get S3 method or something like that. Oh I saw yeah, I saw where you have to go to like and some of them have weird like I think the example was like I mean, um uh, the K means thing. That's it. Um and yeah, so I mean it's kind of cool just to look through the, look through them like well, whatever. Um, so the, you know, and, and so all these different uh, object classes have different methods. Um, and so I guess the formal definition that he gives a little later, I think at the start of 10.5, um, if I can find it, yeah, I'll just search for it. Uh, yeah, is uh, calling a generic Function s f of x dispatches automatically to a method f dot class of x or f of default x in the case where the formal does not exist. So that's for s three classes, um, and the kind of the two big limitations are that classes can't be formally defined, um, and then the argument dispatch is performed only with regard to one data type. Um, and so, like with the idea that they can't be formally defined, means that you can. Like say you wanted to have, um, like you can you can assign a class uh, to an object even if that object doesn't really meet the requirements of that class. So say you had just like a regular numeric vector, but you assigned it to the factor class, uh, and then you started calling, like you know, so if if I call regular print, it's actually called print dot factor, it's like, and and it will tell me like oh like you messed up, like it's not a real factor. And even if I if I call uh, 
just plain print on it. So you, you can easily kind of get out of whack with your, your, uh, I, you know, your assignment of classes, I guess, if you're not careful. Um, uh, and then the argument dispatch limitation is, um, I'm trying to think what, I'm trying to think of the example he gives. Uh, In irritants, no? Yeah, where, where, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for the section. It's this one right here. Uh, so you can see it only dispatches to the the first. Um, oh yeah, the first uh, argument in the function. So for C, uh, it's it's checking X first. Um, although in this case, I guess if the first element is on class, then it checks the. Uh, Maybe we should review our three work before going into the wheels of dispatching. Yeah, I think that's a good, a good, just, just start. I don't know, here, like, uh, am I like yeah, all big, you have read the chapter, but maybe like, let's. Okay. Depend. No, I think, I think that's a good, a good idea. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of go through. Uh, so this section is just about the distinction between types and classes. And so basically classes are kind of like built out of types. So there's very few, and that's like where the cover of the book like kind of comes from, I guess, like the, the branching uh, graphic on the cover uh, is that, you know, there's a few very basic types, like um, there's, you know, there's like atomic vectors and stuff. And then classes are kind of compound types and they're constructed from the, the simpler types. So if you use the function type of uh, on um, like even more complicated uh, objects, like you'll see the, like the last, example in this on this uh here the type if you call type of on function it'll it'll just return closure because that's like a basic that's one of the basic types um you uh call type of uh you know if you call type of on a data frame i think it returns list even you know even though a data frame is kind of its own i think it will return it, uh, maybe it'll return data frame right, let me just check um uh do i still have a data frame no Uh, just empty will work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah. So it'll even though that is a a data frame, but the class will return uh, a data frame because the data frame is kind of a uh, compound type that's uh, uh, constructed using the class system. Um. So that's you know that's exciting. Uh. And, and then this the, that he's just kind of making that point again you could have two objects uh with the same type uh so in this case double but different class attributes and then they behave differently so these are two different ways of representing time um they're both numbers uh but when you print them they uh get printed differently because they're dispatching to different methods so like print dot posix and print dot date um which is kind of the big world, like if I interrupt you like quickly, like the dispatching was like something that I learned, like I didn't know if it's the correct term or like the mm. term, official term, but like, yeah, basically like splitting, yeah, the, um, the flow of the function to the mm -hmm. correct function according to the this attribute class. But yeah, and I didn't and use it all the time now. <laughs> and I guess we'll get to it, but like um, the kind of mechanism for dispatching is this, use method uh, function that you call in a generic uh, to you know dispatch I guess to the right to the right uh, method um, and apparently it's kind of janky uh, he, he in one of the footnotes he says that it has a lot of uh, kind of some problems um, it's out to bros like you <laughs> yeah yeah um, like you need to do like the get s stream method print with the name of it. So you mm -hmm. need to know like the like the generic method prints and then the class to get the help. Also, like I I don't know if it's why he said janky, but yeah, it's it's mm. a bit hard, like uh, if you are not um, familiar with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's that. Um I like this uh this line here. We're having so much fun that one more illustration can only increase our joy. 
Um, so class can only be set to a character vector, and it will it will give you an error if you try to break that rule. Uh, class function has a replacement and a, a kind of reading version, so you can assign the class with the class function if you so desire. Uh, uh, DM kind of implicitly sets the class, where if you have more than one dimension, you're uh, a matrix, I think. Although I guess we'll cover that in chapter 11. Uh, yeah, I think the implicit are for all. Like, for example, if you have like just x, uh, take the value of one, if you do class, I think you will get uh, integer. I don't know. Like, what is it? Like, if you do... Like, for uh, example, if you do just x, take the value of one. Yeah. And class X, you get numeric. Yeah. So implicitly, so it takes the type it. as the mm -hmm. because it's like if we check like um, uh, X, it does not have an attribute class. It just yeah. X. If you do X, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. So it's. Yeah. I think this is that, see, but yeah. You can see it. Still weird. That, yeah, it is weird. That's a good. I that's a good a good point. I uh, hadn't noticed that. Um. So yeah. So this is this next section is just about this mechanism of like dispatching, uh, using the generic to the, uh, to the right method. Um. Yeah. And so the kind of running example in the chapter is uh, he has his own class that kind of mimics the factor class, which is the categorical class. So this is, he's kind of setting up like his own simplified version of the factor class, um, which has an attribute levels, uh, which each level maps onto a numeric value, which is how factors work also. Um, so yeah, the key, the takeaway, I guess, is that to define a method for a generic, you just define, uh, you use the generic term and then period, and then the exact name of your yeah. uh, S3 class. You so need to, to define be... as categorical first, no, I think. Or is it later? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that's that's kind of how you define methods with generics um, generics you can you can create your own generics using this use method uh, uh, function so any function that contains the use method function is I think like kind of by definition a generic s3 generic function um, and so then you you're right like you define that as categorical function um, in this case and and you know just kind of Go from there. Um, yeah, so this was a good point. Example 10.3 is that uh, because that you don't have the formal definition, you don't necessarily know what's going to get uh, passed to your method. Like uh, even though you, you know, in theory, like it, you should only use it for the special class of objects categorical. And, you know, you, anyone could pass a, any other type of argument to it. So you might want to put checks in um, to, to keep people from using the wrong method with the wrong uh, type of object. And I think S4 handles that automatically, I think. I think that's kind of one of the advantages of it. Uh, so, yeah, you can have, and this is just kind of a, a riff on that theme, I guess, where if you uh, say someone passes like a logical vector, then you can, to your uh, as categorical function, he has this kind of special, more efficient way of handling uh, numeric values. So he he uh, converts to numeric and then uh, passes, runs his little function. Um, so there are a lot of built-in generics. These probably all look pretty familiar. So print, obviously, we cover like all the uh, subsetting operators. Um, you know, I, th I think mo probably most of the functions that we uh, have covered so far in the book are uh, generics. Um, 
Yeah, I've done this exercise, but yeah. Which one? The... 10, 6 and stuff like that. Let me see. But yeah, yeah, they are not that hard. Yeah. Uh, I'm unsure, like, uh, if I have solved them correctly, like, if you just reuse, like, the, uh, like what you see as um, attribute X level and class and some variant of it, you basically build unique and rep, right? Mm. Especially if you if you do a sneak peek at factors. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> then that's it's just copied from that. Um, yeah. And I thought this was weird. Like he, I don't think he ever defined this verb overload. Like he kept saying using that word, and I guess it just means assign a I mean, uh, a method to a, a I, class. I understand. Like dispatching is when like the function is going to go to the methods. An overload is providing the generic the method to be dispatched. This is how I understand mm, it. Mm -hmm. But like you totally on point, it was not defined. Okay. That's all, but that's my understanding, which is not grounded. That's good, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I'm taking but notes. You use it a lot, like also the law word overload, I think. Um so I, you know, I think Tim, this is kind of reiterating the point that you have to be careful because uh, you can create uh, new uh, classes and the, the generics don't necessarily play well when they get un play nice with like unexpected input. So you just have to make sure that you uh, define uh, as many of the kind of possible inputs as you can. Um, unless you're just kind of working for your own, you know, for yourself or so. If you anticipate that anyone's going to use the code, uh, then then you kind of have to be very careful to to make sure to robustify it. Um, and so I, I haven't done these ones. I don't know if uh, there are any. Uh, I good think insects. I haven't saw that one. Let me check. Um, but I wasn't unsure. Let me uh, where is here. Uh, where is it? And class X, uh, but with no attributes and as you make that you, you convert the index. That's why I wrote, <laughs> does that make wow. too much stuff? But let me re read the question. Like, uh, yeah, when you use and class, um, you get X, but with no attributes. So mm -hmm. you kind of remove the attributes. And when you use as numeric, you are converting the index as mm -hmm. numeric. So it's it's a bit different, but okay. like I'm unsure. Like, how oh, does it matter? Like, it's different, mm. but is you, it very? I, maybe yeah. get the same result, huh? Yeah, they okay. get nearly the same results. Because <laughs> but... I guess if you call as numeric on a factor, basically you get the yeah you get the index or the you get the numeric. Yeah, ID you get like the, the x. Yeah. yeah, and then you use, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. Just assigning names at template the nice, but 10, 10, names. I was not sure also. Like, introduce, uh, introduce this thing that would make the above code would generate a more natural result. I, I think it's deal with the sort, which is like mm -hmm. a bit higher. So we are using the default sort, and I assume like the goal is like to introduce uh, a method on sort that's organized another way. But I was too lazy to do it. But I, like on one line, uh, <laughs> it was not like typing one line. It was like being the correct line. And I think the correct, the only place available, like if you just want to do a one line, is in the sort option. Like if okay, you go so a bit you higher, to, okay. Like uh, uh, I can search for it. Too, but... Yeah. No, but yeah. Oh, I have to go uh, up. up. Yeah. You have to go up. See here. Yeah, I think I you see. need to deal with the sort. This is the sort is doing alphabetically because, mm -hmm. like, you are, or maybe you can sort before, like, before the characters. I see. Because, yeah, I see. So, right, XU, it's sorting. This is sorting alphabetically. Yeah. And so you have to change it to, okay. I think this is, yeah, but <laughs> I have okay. not tried it. That makes sense. That makes sense. You'd have to change this somehow. Just line. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Which is powerful. Mm -hmm. but for what i mean yeah yeah that's a good um so we already i guess talked about this 10.2.4 uh 
uh, section a little bit, but uh, just the idea is that uh, S3 dispatching is most often done on uh, the class of only one argument. And I think usually, like usually the first argument, and I think the only exception I think that he points out in this chapter is like binary operators, like um, equals or greater than or less than, They it's based on the class of both arguments yeah. but um i think good in points. general yeah i think in general it's just uh um it doesn't have to be the first argument but i think it is typically just one argument um so which you know is uh can make it hard to deal with more complicated situations uh yeah like yeah yeah i got to go back like and motivate a bit uh like, uh, I, for example, like, um, I will say like S3 is cool if you have some particular structures that you want to take care of. Mm. I'm not sure like the factor arguments, like the one, like the factor class uh, mm -hmm. issues, is that interesting? I mean, yeah. Yes, it is, but like I explained a lot behind like the logic in factors in R, but um, like I, there's like for example, do you know another S three uh, except data frame uh, time time uh, time is a good yeah, example. Yeah, all the POSIX, Yeah, all the all the time ones. All the time one are good example. Like I think also graph some graph objects are on S three. So and like yeah, uh, like you can list all the all the uh s3, s3. What, what does he uh all the ones that are uh shoot how is it it was get uh this is one of the footnotes where you can yeah. see all the i don't um, know it doesn't matter i guess but um this 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 yeah argument. uh so all, all of these oh. i think um and there are some quite original I guess this is just in the, you know, in base R. I haven't Yeah, just any. in base R. Yeah. So that's that's like a good start, like saying like, yeah, yeah, it's important, not just like for your random. Um, I think like, for example, the warnings and the error, like sometimes people want to implement like one some of automa uh, an automatic way of displaying error because error mm -hmm. happens all the time. And you want uh, your user to in, or yourself to in, to have like a, a way of handling that, mm -hmm. and then uh, yeah, so yeah, this is not marginal stuff. <laughs> okay, so it's good to know all the kind of S three classes in base R, so that you can make use of those also. Yeah, and even at the user standpoint, I would say like if you want to know to read the um, the cards. Yeah, you need to know the correct function, and if you just take the print function, you just get the use method and get frustrated. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah, that's a good. That's a good point. Yep, that's a good point. Yeah, you have to know the method. So that's um, like, but yeah, that's good. Sorry to interrupt. No, no, that was good. Good, and I, I, I think I, I really haven't done much object oriented programming. You know, I, I mostly all functional in R, like, and then. The little Python I I do I guess is like kind of object oriented, but I don't I don't really ever define my own classes. Uh, you don't define I, main on top and or init main. No, <laughs> I guess not. Um, uh, and so um, yeah, I'm, I I don't have a lot of like the theoretical background for this object oriented stuff, but um, it is very interesting. And and, and you know some it's, of the stuff it's, it's good, like you know. Uh, I feel like ten years ago it was very high on the hype. Yeah. You needed to do to do to do like an OP object, so mm -hmm. it was Java C plus plus. Now people kind of like have going a bit backward on it. Like mm -hmm. I have seen even like for pipeline saying like oh for pipeline just do functional style. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like see even in our functional language like the it's still powerful to organize. The, and it's reduced like the function overload. Like if you want to print, let's say like you are defining your home object, you want the user to just type print. You don't want them to. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's powerful like to simplify a bunch of stuff. Like mm -hmm. do you want like print my objects? 
function or do you want to define treat my object functions yeah. that's exactly that but for specific i think it's a good way to organize code also in mm -hmm. some play in some cases mm -hmm. like for example one package that i know sf like the special features package mm -hmm. um use a lot of s3 object in that load. Mm -hmm. no actors yeah hello. This... hello this one is here <laughs> the other one i have to pick but yeah um <laughs> uh yeah hide yourself <laughs> so yes in sf like there's multiple s3 objects that are used even just to organize the code not like to um so they're useful okay i don't think like they are useful on every day but yeah they're useful and if you are just a user knowing how they work is useful because then you can debug them yeah um it's my yeah, small so that, that is helpful uh so yeah, just the main point of this section is that it, it uh, you can only call based off the class of one uh, argument to a function. Um, I guess there's like uh, some some yeah. methods at least have like a fallback where if the first argument's unclassed, it checks the second. Um, In most cases, I guess you can call the you know the the method directly. You don't have to, uh, you you know if you if you kind of want to force yeah, it, yeah, although you, you can't yeah, you always find it. Actor, yeah. don't disturb people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's his name? Hector. Hector, yeah. Ah, uh, he's cute. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> um. Well, that's funny. Um. And so this was just the example. This example 10.11 yeah. was yeah. the one that we uh, talked about at the beginning of the class, where if you want to uh, get the S3, some S3 methods are hidden from, I guess, the user name space, um, but you can still access them with this get S3 methods. So I think they're loaded. I just covered but, that. But yeah, I didn't, yeah, I've never heard of that before. So yeah, some of them are loaded, but not... Uh, but they're hidden for some reason. I don't know why that would be, but um, yeah. I think this just depends on the namespace where they live in. Okay. And I think mm -hmm. this is why the triple colon, but we will know later. It will be explained, I hope. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's um, depend on the environment. Yeah. Uh, so this uh, section 10.2.5 is about multi-classness. So this was a little bit about like the idea of inheritance. So like, um, the idea is you could almost have like a sub class that uh, has its own attributes, but then if they're not, uh, if they're missing or not specified, it kind of falls back to the uh, higher order class. Um, and so I guess the S3, and so I, I don't really know how inheritance works in like true object oriented systems, but I guess the S3 version is not very uh, uh, elaborate. You know, it's just like a very, very simple implementation. Um, and so the example they have here is you have um, uh, two dates that uh, have, I have two classes. So the first is this uh, just kind of specialized, yeah. specialized types of date. So uh, yeah, POSIX CT and POSIX LT. Um, and so if, if, a met, if a generic has a method for POSIX CT or POSIX LT, it will use that. But if it doesn't, it will it will use the method for POSIX T in general. Um, so that gives you a, a way to have kind of special treatment, um, but still get the general uh, the general functionality from the more general uh, classes. Uh, and so here, this is just specifying the the logic, I guess, underlying that. So that can be helpful, I guess, if you're. I was thinking of it as like a subclass or something like that. I don't know if that's quite right, but. Um, uh yeah, I think people well it's hard because like but I think people like let's say for example uh you could for example design a class which is message inside of this class message you could define a, a subclass that is warning and mm -hmm. inside of the warning you could have like an error and mm -hmm. this is I don't know if it's implemented like that but this is like just mm -hmm. an example of a big like when people define class in all or object-oriented, usually like they sing like the, the top level, then they go down. And 
a lot of time we work a bit backward. We define like our mm -hmm. small function. And <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's more on the design part, I guess. Mm -hmm. That makes but, sense. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, and so I, I was a little unsure about this. So like if you want to use inheritance, like I think inheritance happens automatically. You don't have to uh, use this setup here. Um, or do I we? Think I, it's, I, it's it's a way to deal backward. Like do you want to use like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's. I see. Okay. So, so like the way like Basie founds, uh, yeah, like if it's POSIX six um, uh, city, it will not run. It will, so it will go directly to POSIX six uh, city, and mm -hmm. if it's uh, POS uh, POS LT, then it will convert to POSIX city. So I because see. like the okay. system on okay. top was like object of POSIX ct then posix t and I posix see. lt then posix t and if you want them to happen like in more like you can probably do posix ct posix lt posix t mm -hmm. but it's not not have been implemented that makes sense. so this is okay the way. this is how I, okay. I understood that but yeah that's a good okay i, I agree like this was a bit cryptic yeah but that makes sense so it's like if you want to make use of you want to treat posix yeah. LT objects like POSIX CT objects, then you can use this, uh, this yeah. formulation. Um, so yeah, and so I, I guess in other in other languages, there's kind of a more robust system of inheritance, and even in S4, I think the inheritance is is formally defined instead of um, you know kind of uh, yeah casually. Uh, so this is just about defining this next section 10.2.6 is just about defining operators um, uh, or calling operator methods for specific classes. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything special about this section. Um, oh, so I, I guess because uh, of the... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just going to repeat what the book says, I guess. But uh, because this is hard coded, you have to uh, use this next method function, I guess. To, or you can call unclass on the. Which is the same, yeah. On the input, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Which, like, yeah. basically, like, re remove the, the class of it, then pass yep. it. And then, yep. And next method, you force it. Mm, okay, so you skip over, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's how I understand it, but yeah. Okay. Um. By the way, he showed the two methods, but don't tell you which one is good. So <laughs> maybe both are fine. I don't know. Uh, I haven't. I haven't done this one, so I, no, I, I I'm not sure the answer. Uh, and so the the binary uh, case is a special case where you do the operator does look at the class of both objects. Um, he's just defining a binary operator for his categorical, uh, his kind of factor-like variable. Uh, yeah, this is that kind of special uh, note. The dispatch is based on the, the class of both objects. Oh, and this I this is kind of interesting. So I guess there's these. Um, let me, uh, sorry. So like, if you go to help uh, ops, you can see that there's these uh, group generic functions like ops or summary that you can uh, define methods nice. for, and then they'll apply to like a whole a whole bunch. So in this case, op. Op stands for operations, and if you define uh, a, a method for that, it will apply to every, to you know, greater than equal to you know, less than, greater than or equal to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of useful. I'm not sure. Yeah. So I guess if you yeah, same thing, like if you want to apply to every uh, type of kind of summary function, like min, sum, and all, you can you can use these uh, this group generic function to kind of save yourself some. Uh, and typing, I guess. 
Um, so that's kind of interesting. I didn't know, like, even, even knowing, like, the ops was valuable here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you know it exists and you know where to search. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, and then, so this is just going through. And I, I admit that I, I did read this where I just found it, like, I hate reading about dates. Uh, but uh, So, yeah, so it's going through the different subtypes of the date classes yeah. or different types of date classes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it's yeah. super verbose also like it's yeah it's very like... verbose and so i don't know maybe we should just skip we can over we can go through it like yeah. i think one of the stuff like you should mention is like you should use string uh, x all like the mm -hmm. uh, this is ian ian kind of by that i think no yeah he has the down here somewhere he's yeah yeah um, that's it so i'm not sure and maybe i'd have to go back and look at the string chapter why he why string x it handles date times better than the base r uh functions but um it, it just like in a lot of i think 90 percent of your use case uh like you have an overhead the generalization has a big overhead mm. so and that's why it's super verbose because you need like two accounts like what's happened if you uh, change the, for example, like if you change the time zone and uh, go through midnight, this is one of the example you give. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. what, what happens. Yeah. So this is the, all of this question. <laughs> all these sub, uh, okay. That so that you avoid, okay. And um, but you don't, you don't want, you don't want to do that by hand, and that's yeah. why you use a package. I mean, you want someone have done through that for you. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to think about it yourself. Yeah. Um, but the, the the part was cool, like the higher um, part, like the ISO, like he asked, like, this is useful. I mean, this could be useful, like all this, this part, like the, mm -hmm. the weekday, the, the, the ISO day time, uh, all the information, like the seg, the mean, et cetera, et cetera. Like if you go a bit the list below mm -hmm. here, just a bit below here, you have like all the, so if you want the 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 hours so it's the zero by 23 I, yeah. the min mm -hmm. you have all of that all of that is contained into a list mm -hmm. so you can get them so it, it's if you need to yeah that is useful. yes okay but and that that's but even if you can access them like see like this is zero to 51 59 mm -hmm. and so yeah you need to adjust a bit but yeah okay. and that's that why is useful. yeah that is useful anyway sorry yeah. No, no, that's time. that is useful because I, I, I don't, I don't think I really appreciated that. Um, Can be useful. Uh, and so, yeah, this next part, like you said earlier, is just um, about the factor class, but also the, I think the only discussion of factors in this book, I think. So, like, it's yeah. kind of good to, I guess, read it. Um, and so, it, it works a lot like that categorical class where it has. Uh, like numeric elements and then they're mapped to like characters uh yep uh um and so i, ha I haven't done these although i, I do i do plan to because i you know yeah fact, it's you turn find up so much. The, the answer for the <laughs> yeah yeah and you'll get the answers for the other yeah um What's this? Uh, it's not been overloaded for fact. Oh, I see. So, so this was uh, related to yeah. the question we had before. If you call as numeric on a factor, you don't get the character code. You get the, the numeric uh, portion of it. Um, and so, same kind of similar issue here, where if you uh, try yeah. to index by a character, uh, it, it'll index uh, with the numeric. Kind of, yeah, with a numeric. Yeah. Um, which probably caught a lot of people off guard. Yeah, which is like un maybe a little bit unintuitive, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I thought this was useful because I, I usually use that, the four cats package when I have to do uh, factor reordering, but this is, you know, relatively simple. Um, you know, there's nothing difficult about reordering factors with base R. Um, uh, 
first job from the Formula A. This one, yeah. Um, Formula A, he didn't, he didn't really discuss, I thought, in necessarily the most helpful way, the, the Formula, except just that they, this, this operator is, exists and is used in a lot of, uh, like, statistical modeling functions. Yeah. Um, and apparently it can be, uh, it's not like a, uh, R class, I guess. Maybe it's, I don't, maybe I'm misinterpreting what he's saying here, but it's, it's like every package basically is defining it in its own, in its own way. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Um, uh, there was kind of a discussion of the pipe operator, um, which I don't, you know, I don't think said too much. Um, you know, I think the, the conceptual thing is just that it, uh, where does he have it? He, it, it converts between the message passing and the, uh, what does he call it? Uh, right on the left end. Yeah, yeah. It converts between the kind of two two versions of expressing uh, pipelines. Yeah, f funnily, like I, before I mentioned that, I never realized how the pipe look at Pythonish. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not look at the piping function, but you're going to pipe methods. Yeah, yeah. So it's that's true, like you're doing like... Uh, had, uh, that's a good point, because he had... Uh, where did he have that? Oh, right here. Yeah, object method here, method too. Yeah, yeah. Where they, it is similar to the pipe. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't know. Anyway, it's yeah. not a big deal. Just a matter of tests. I I mean honestly, the main reason I like the pipe is it just makes it easier to uh, get things to be under eighty characters per line without making them difficult to read. You know, a lot of times yeah, you but have a. Th then you can use the placeholders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's depend like sometimes it's go fast to rerun the analysis, you know, like you just grab them and resend it mm -hmm. and stop at the pipe. But sometimes when you need to inspect the object, it make more sense to have placeholders. I think it's mm -hmm. depend of what you are doing. I don't think yeah. it matter too much. Anyway, it's just a matter of this. Yeah. And then the base our pipe is pretty limited. Like you can only use this uh, yeah. once you have to like you have to name the uh, argument that you're passing it to, uh, if it's not the first one. Um, and so it's, it's much more limited. And so I think, I almost think any case that's, you wouldn't want to use a pipe, you can't really use it anyhow with the limited version of, uh, the, the base art pipe. I think the Magritte pipe had all these, uh, kind of crazy things you could do with it. And I think maybe it was easy to get carried away with the the mag because you could have I think unlimited placeholders and you could subset the place you could do all this stuff with the yeah the magrater pipe that maybe you shouldn't do. Um so yeah, so that's the pipe. Uh and so yeah, now we're into S4 S4 classes, which um are trying to kind of formalize, I think, the S3 uh kind of system a little bit. Um and so instead of just using the uh class attribute to set classes and just kind of uh, hoping things turn out. You have to define a class um, and then you have to create an object. Uh, when you create the object, you formally assign it to the new class and you're forced to assign uh, all the respective attributes. Um, so it's just like a, a kind of a, a little bit more strict uh, version, I, I'd say, of, of S3. I don't know if that's kind of consistent with your understanding of it but um yeah 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 i understand the author is not fan of it not a huge fan of it also. yeah no um, um the only s4 objects that i have used a lot was sp which was the previous mm -hmm. iteration of special mm -hmm. uh, data which is a lot of uh and the authors at the end didn't like it so i can't tell too much about it mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just a user of them and i have not used much of he it. says the uh he said that the um oops uh, all right, match case. Uh, the big matrix, like capital M matrix class, is the S is an S four, and so I don't because mm. I think the reg like lowercase M matrix class is S three, so I don't know what this capital M matrix class is. So I guess we'll find out. But um, it does. Uh, and so yeah, I think the uh, the main thing with S four is that now you have to use a special set of functions provided by the methods package to do all this stuff so like if you want to make a new class you can uh you define it with set class you can create an object from a class mm -hmm. using with the, the new, new method yeah. yep um 
is will just tell you is returns a logical value for uh, whether or not an object is is part of a member of the class. Uh, if you want to access, I guess these things are called slots, like the attributes are, are referred to as slots. So if you want to reference a particular slot, you can use like the, the, the at operator. Um, or, slot, or the slot function, but yeah. Or the slot, yep, or the slot function. Um, and so, yeah, it's, instead of, uh, before when we wanted to define a method, we just made a function that ended in period the class. Now you, you use this set method uh, function. So everything is a, like a little bit more formal. Um, and also like doesn't look that R-ish, I'd say, like looks a little, um, feels a little alien. Like he points out that like when you um, kind of define a class, you're, you don't do any assignment. Um, it's a little, it's, it just does seem like it's kind of foreign a little yeah. bit to the main. It's a setting function. It yeah. sets something somewhere. Yeah. But you don't know where exactly. Currently, mm -hmm. it's a global environment, see like mm -hmm. in the call, but you can probably set it somewhere. Like if you go a bit uh, higher, you see like the, the set have been done. See here. Oh, oh well. yeah. Just uh, see qualitative attribute package. It's inside the global environment. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, it's a class. The inside of the class, it has that. So I don't know exactly like mm. yeah, how it works, but. Okay. Interesting. It's probably like we'll probably see more letters on that. Okay. Because that chapter, yeah, we have the environment chapter. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I'm, I'm not really sure what's going on in this uh, section. Uh, it's just an initialize method. Yep. Yeah. Um, so to create one object easier. Oh, and then you can, it also has a formal, uh, a function for formalizing like the, yeah. the inheritance. Um, so you can have uh, one class that contains the methods of another class. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's chapter. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if you if you have to go, you should definitely go. I, I don't want to. Yeah, we, I will have to go. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you want to wrap it up a bit? Yeah. Um. I mean, I think, you know, that's it. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. What, yeah. Well, uh, I will wrap it up. It's it was a difficult chapter, so good job okay. doing it. Uh, it does not appear necessarily useful for now, I think. But more you use our package, more you will need to twing them, mm -hmm. and then may, like this, you'll be useful to knowledge later. Mm -hmm. And I think like the trick of using the first attribute class to do some stuff mm -hmm. is is very not expensive and can be useful in other. Mm -hmm. implementation because it's very like high level like you just define it yeah. with the tool you have it does yeah. not need you know like complex stuff to work yeah so. you don't need a whole nother subsystem yeah, yeah. just yeah I, yeah just I think that is useful um and also being able to extract stuff like you pointed out like with the the date classes yeah. to be able to extract stuff from the list representation and use it and yeah i think that is useful um yeah, so yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. Uh, who's next week? Maybe it's me. I don't know. We I'm just have sure. to design. Um, Could be me. I don't know. I was just that's... looking at it. No one signed up. I signed okay, up. Okay, so that's for... on me. I will sign yeah. you. For okay. data frames. I, also, the, the t dates are wrong on the Google Sheet. And I yeah, no, we are it. doing the matrix. I, oh, the yeah. The dates are wrong. Mm -hmm. I tried to fix them. I did a bad job. I no, no worries. No day. worries. We're correct. We know where we are. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah. Okay, I have to go. Thanks. But okay. uh, I'm on next week. Good job. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for your help.